Hi guys, it is just a, just a yuck, gloomy, gray, drippy, nasty, depressing Monday morning here in the end times and I guess sort of paradise. I'm now on back on the slopes of the Mount Rainier volcano in Washington State on my last chance, last gasp chance to see Bigfoot today. It's today or never, probably. So anyway, Monday morning, it is September 25th, 2017, and I need to get into my economic meltdown roundup rant. But before I dive into that, since I didn't have the time on my hands yesterday, we need to check in with Brother Andy, with Brother Andy Gardner over there in Zombie Island from the view from Zombie Island to see what's on the alert minds of Andy this week and uh, Andy I mean obviously Zombie Island would be would be England and so I was curious to hear uh, Andy's review of 1984 George Orwell's 1984 what is his take on that book and uh, Take it away, Andy. He's, 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 <laughs> only Andy. <clears throat> now, uh, the proles, P-R-O-L-E-S, the proles, if you haven't read this book, are just the ordinary, clueless, moron, unwashed masses of citizenry <clears throat> who Orwell said would never revolt. The proles probably would revolt if it was really like that. Uh, as it was written in 1984, if, if society had developed completely as Orwell's satire, uh, the proles probably would revolt if it was really like Orwell said it was going to be. Why I don't think why I don't think 1984 is a particularly good reflection of today's world. Instead of a dystopia of horrible things where room 101 is filled with all their worst nightmares, the current, the, the current dystopia is the polar opposite and paradoxically much, much worse. So I guess in 2017, he's talking about room 101 is filled with every luxury and temptation the proles, meaning the, the clueless fucking morons, uh, they can imagine the underlying cost, a dying world and mass extinction of life on Earth, is the cosmic horror of it that they, the clueless morons, don't notice or care about it is even worse. The proles are given everything they want at a touch of a button where they are encouraged to dream, and where every dream can come true, courtesy of cheap fossil fuels, as long as they work hard enough and ignore the price. Only if you have ecological awareness is the modern world a dystopia. For every other clueless moron, Tom, Dick, and Harry, it is a veritable paradise on Earth. Give all the proles a magic carpet car for effortless transport and an easy jet flight to wherever they want to go and cheap food and clothes, medicines, gadgets of every description and their own little McMansions for doing hardly anything other than conform and accept the situation like a zombie. Why the fuck would they revolt against all that? All revolutions are for more, not less, which is why there won't be a revolution, and why the proles are fucked. The New World Order establishment, or machine, in its zombie brain knows what it is doing. It is easier to enslave people by bribery than by force. And of course, this is the essential uh, truth of my economic meltdown roundup rant, which I still need to get together. The only people 
that are experiencing a genuinely Orwellian Room 101 hell are us eco-Nazis. What is your greatest nightmare, they ask? Oh, the destruction of life and eradication of all the wonder and beauty in the world and nobody giving a shit and not having a political voice. Ha ha, that can be arranged. And, oh, it's not rats you fear <clears throat> so much as rat monkeys. So here is a plague of 12 billion of them. There you go. Uh, so my comment back to Andy was uh, agreed, which is why I clearly made the point before the reading that Orwell was no eco-Nazi. <clears throat> I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because in 1949, even a man of his genius would not have been able to imagine the horror building on this planet. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, back to Andy. Sure, I wasn't really criticizing 1984, just using it as a springboard for one of my free thought rant comments. A police state is not incompatible with the current capitalist utopia slash dystopia. I think it is already in place. And I, and, and I think, Andy, that in London is probably, I've heard, is about the biggest police state on the planet. <clears throat> I think it is already in place and is just biding its time for when extra measures, measures are necessary to maintain law and order, also known as protect the elites. I'm pretty sure the cancer's immune system is keeping tabs on YouTube radicals. It's just they don't need to actually dissolve anybody for thought crimes because being so glutted and drunk on comforts, travel and industrial goodies, the proles are oblivious to any problems with the system and will never revolt. The elites have bought off everyone, and until things get really shitty, can just watch all the little anti-capitalists waste their lives talking to themselves. I can't fault Orwell's general worldview that the corporate industrial world was likely to unfold into a nightmare of corruption and control if left to its own devices, as has happened. <clears throat> Orwell was a genius. He seemed to be equally disdainful of both capitalist and Marxist systems in 1984 and Animal Farm. Got it, on, got it spot on, really. If he was really clever, though, his last book might have been called We Are So Fucked. Okay. Let's uh, get one, one more rant on uh, Houston, Texas and other mega shitties. <clears throat> the only good mega shitty is a Houstonized one. Well, Houston is getting better anyway. Give it a few more mega hurricanes and it will be absolutely perfect. It is the mega shitty versus mega hurricane show here in the mega cancer and times. It's fun now, but after a few more years, it's going to start to get boring. You can only watch a big shitty getting smashed to bits so many times before you just go, eh. No mega shitty can function when the fossil fuel that runs dry either and non-linear global warming is not even required to put the final nail in our coffin. So, you know, Andy and I like to have this friendly little debate about whether peak oil is real. A Andy's a major peak oil theorist. I'm on the peak oil fence. I I'm with Bill McKibben that uh, we're going to take this planet Venus before, uh, before we reach peak oil. 
But anyway, so this is just part of part of Andy's and I continuing debate. <clears throat> Hambone. There cannot be growing demand for oil and low oil prices every day given the fact of peak oil, i.e. oil supply not rising, <clears throat> not going up, is the definition of peak oil. It's an oxymoron. If demand <clears throat> were growing, prices would be rising, and it would not be cheap anymore. Your sources, mainly talking about the International Energy Agency, which I honestly do not know how to read the IEA, whether it's right out of uh, the telescreens of George Orwell's 1984 or not. I really don't know. I'm just, I, I, I'm, I'm putting this out there in the mainstream media, uh, mostly every Monday morning, because this is what the mainstream media is telling uh, the proles. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. I don't pick up, you notice whenever I'm doing these oil demand, I don't pick up either button. Because I don't know. Andy does know. He, he says the IEA is right off of the telescreen. Well, time will tell, I guess. <clears throat> so that's what he means by my sources. Your sources are clearly bullshit. This is the only way they are keeping in business. Don't forget, they have to lie to keep the oil company shareholders happy and subsidies flowing from the economy to the energy sector. They can divert so much energy and cash from the economy before another 2008 happens, and there won't be any bailout this time. The storms, the economy, the population, the politics, it is all coming together. Okay, we're going to shift gears into Duck Dynasty, clueless morons who do not know how to shit in the woods. Can't these retards even bury their poop under the leaf litter? Even cats can bury their shit. I mean poop. Fuck it. Even humans in Zombie Island can bury their shit. We are somewhat civilized in the old world. Now, they, meaning his fellow Brits, do leave dog shit in little plastic bags along paths, though, often throwing them up into trees as some sort of, some sort of weird tree decoration, or maybe as a pagan ritual. But I'll gl gloss over that little detail. Isn't leaving shit lying around on the floor the behavior of dogs and mentally ill people? I don't even want to know what skeets are. I fucking hate people. And I'm not visiting Disney World now. The behavior of your people is a disgrace. Okay, to end times Christians talking about the end of the world, which was supposed to happen the day before yesterday. It's odd that all those rapture-ready Christians worship Trump, who promises more jobs, growth, holidays, SUVs, and fossil-fueled hedonistic orgy of delights here on Earth, rather than a Jesus-like figure who promotes frugality here on Earth in anticipation, contrast, and reward for the eternal spiritual bounty that awaits in heaven. It's almost like they don't believe any of that being raptured into heaven bullshit and are just mindless predatory rat monkeys programmed to devour all available resources while popping out as many replicas of themselves as possible. Okay, what does Andy think about the article I read about a 1 in 20 chance 
a 1 in 20 chance of industrial civilization, if not the human species, being eradicated by the year 2100 by climate change. A 1 in 20 chance of industrial civilization being wiped out by global warming? Total drivel. It's 50-50 if I was being really optimistic, or 100% chance if I was honest. <clears throat> Business as usual means we are locked in to 6 degrees Celsius by 2100, and that is game over for the human species in that time frame, let alone civilization. But even that's not joining the dots up properly. It's far too optimistic. We cannot look at the future in terms of just global warming or anything else in isolation. Thank you, Andy, for pointing this out. You need to look at the complete fucking picture. When you combine all the other factors with climate such as energy decline and population overshoot, there is zero chance of industrial civilization surviving to 2100. Energy decline alone means collapse is absolutely inevitable. There is no adaptation or feeding vast plagues of people in heaving mega shitties without lots of free, cheap energy and stable, functional global economies, but that is going to be falling apart by 2025, let alone 2100. They are banking on human ingenuity and techs to fix this shitstorm, but that is completely overwhelmed by human stupidity, arrogance, non-action, and denial. I even see some denial in the best of the New World Order truth tellers. Neil deGrasse Tyson is still massively equivocating in some of the phrases he uses. He is still a clueless moron. Uh, and then I, I'm going to talk more. This is Andy's response to that absolutely uh, unadulterated horseshit. Uh, mainstream media interpretation of this new study claiming that humans have 20 more years just to keep burning fossil fuels like partying like it's 1950. Uh, now actually, as I'll talk about on Wednesday, the authors of this report, this Dr. Grubb and the others, have, have put out a vehement amplification and clarification that the mainstream media absolutely misrepresented what they were saying, and they never said anything like the fucking uh, mainstream media was talking about. I'll get back to that on Wednesday. So take these comments, you know, with a little bit of grain of salt. That little maggot, Dr. Grubb, criminally ignores factors that place guaranteed warming over three degrees Celsius. I don't really need to tell anyone here that there is a warming lag of about 30 years, which means current levels of CO2 are not expressing anywhere near their full future potential yet. Then there are the many known and unknown amplifying feedbacks such as methane release and loss of albedo. This will inevitably cause significant warming. On top of these, there is the global dimming from aviation, coal burning, and forest burning that is masking much of the locked-in warming that has occurred, making the planet appear cooler than it really is. These factors mean global tempers are temps are effectively about 3 degrees C already, so we clearly have a considerable negative carbon budget, not a positive one. So any further stalling on drastic action is insanity. 
Dr. Maggot is also using a far later start date than is reasonable. The Industrial Revolution started way before 1850. If a more reasonable earlier start date is used, like 1800, warming would be well over one and a half degrees C. <clears throat> Of course, this little peer-reviewed study, soon to be destroyed by actual peer review, but it won't matter one bit, is vital if Industrial Civilization Inc. wants to carry on selling cars and easy jet holidays while giving the appearance of legitimacy and excuses for the peon zombies to use when they drive their fucking cars and fly to Disney World. There is zero chance of meeting the 2C obligation now, and they know it. It's becoming really obvious, so the New World Order has to fudge the data and arguments to give itself credibility. Climate change and industry minister, that England has the same person, the same person is the climate change minister and the energy minister. Climate change and industry minister. Bloody hell, that says it all. Put the fox in charge of the chicken coop. It's zombie island at its finest. The writers of the How to Destroy a Planet manual can still cut it with the big boys. And I'm going to close uh, once, once again... Uh, well, with these comments about, uh, about Donald Trump and the rest of these fuckers with this, with this, with this little ham bone disclaimer, just in case anybody, anybody in, uh, Homeland Security on this side of the pond or Scotland Yard over there or whoever is, is surveilling this channel is surveilling Humpty Dumpty Tribe. I'm going to make it clear to my friends in the police state listening to this that the views of the commenters, of, of my subscribers, are not, are, are their own and do not necessarily reflect the views of Hambone Littletail. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Police State? Okay, so with that disclaimer, let's, uh, what is Andy's view on Donald Trump? <clears throat> I'm not, I, think, I guess he's talking about me or, or anyone else. I'm not sure about your views on North Korea. It doesn't matter one way or, or another in the big picture. It's just another distraction from reality. However, I definitely think what might help our general situation is if someone could please assassinate Donald Trump and all his business chums in the White House and elsewhere and all the other capitalist New World Order governments too, especially the zombie island ones. While I'm at it, do all the executives in the oil companies and car companies, other industries, banks, and all the other cancer institutions. I like that a lot more. Just round them all up and machine gun the fuckers. Not just because they are dangerous, but because they fucking deserve to die. And I'm in a bad mood and cannot be bothered to think up something more considered. God, an eco-Nazi revolution followed by a vicious and completely thorough clear-out of all the ignorant, ambitious, self-serving, careerist scum in power is so overdue and would be really good anyway. If someone could do that, it would be great. Once again, 
for my friends at Homeland Security in Scotland Yard eavesdropping on this channel. The views reflected by Andy Gardner are not necessarily those reflected by Hamlin Littledale. So this was Andy's response to my message to Homeland Security in Scotland Yard. Yeah, right, right, Hambone. And I did say I hope somebody assassinates them for the sake of argument and all. Not saying I would do anything personally. I am far too lazy and simply don't have the global organization in place. Not yet, anyway. It's just a far-off dream at the moment. You've got to have a dream, they say. Just to be clear, if any Scotland Yard plods really are listening in to me, apart from saying, fuck it, I just can't see the point of terminating the life of just one or two of the corporate fuckers in power. It would be fun, but the person would just be replaced by another ambitious underling. It would have to be a large-scale roundup and massacre of the elites, i.e. thousands of them, probably millions of them, a political coup d'etat and purge, if you like. Such has happened in the French Revolution to make any difference but much larger as reflects the scale of the problem. As I say, I am far too lazy to organize a global coup d'etat to end capitalism. Just covering my ass here. Saying that if someone connected is onto it, I am certainly willing to offer my assistance in any way I can. As ever, please contact me on my secret number. <laughs> okay, and uh, you've done everything you can now to get uh, yourself arrested, me arrested, this channel kicked off of YouTube, uh, Homeland Security in Scotland Yard. This is called eco-Nazis dreaming and joking between themselves. But you know, his comment there about, please contact me at my secret number. If anybody needs to contact Hambone Littletail and Humpty Dumpty Tribe, if you want to get a private message to me, where maybe in your message to me, you can tell me how to contact you. It is Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com. Humpty Dumpty Tribe, all lowercase, one word, at gmail.com. If you need to send a private message to me, and then I will have a way to, to contact you. I'm going to do a whole little one-minute separate rant on this. Anyway, guys, with that, i got to wrap up this rant and uh, put together my weekly economic meltdown roundup rant to flesh out everything uh, Andy's talking about here. And then I've got one more day, one more day in the wilderness to find Bigfoot on this gloomy gray day in the end times. Bye, guys.